Welcome to WTIS 16 from Habarone in Botswana. I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio by Martin Blix, who is digitalization expert and former secretary to the Swedish Prime Minister in the Commission on the Future Challenges of Sweden. Martin, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Thank you. Now, I'd like to start off by asking you a little bit about the structural changes that have been caused by ICTs from an economic and individual point of view. Um, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about them. So in my research, I've looked at this from a variety of perspectives. Uh, it's one of the areas where I think there's actually a, a kind of a consensus in the academic literature that digitalization has led to a polarization, which means that the middle classes have been thinning out and the low pay, high pay jobs have been increasing. And this has been going on for several decades, for three to four decades. So it's a, it's a very strong development. And we've seen it in many countries, many OECD countries. So it's, it's a fairly common trend and it's driven by technology and it's been driven by institutional changes. And so it's affecting our work in, in, in important ways. Can you give us a few examples? Well, I mean, we know, for example, how wage developments in some countries in the US, median wages have been stagnant for, for a long time and that's causing uh, anger and resentment uh, in, in that comes also out in political ways. Uh, so there are very real issues behind this. We, I mean, we've not seen the unemployment, the fear of unemployment that's been discussed uh, in technology, but it's taking this different form of, uh, of polarizing the wages. Uh, another trend is that we've seen uh, more, uh, an increase in the number of jobs that are less secure. So this has also been a strong trend in, in many OECD countries. So non-standard work, uh, anything that's not fixed term where you have all this safety that's involved in, in, uh, in permanent work. And should people be apprehensive about the impact of ICTs on their lives? Well, yeah, I mean, I, th I think we're right in the middle of a change. It's a very big change. And sometimes it's hard to see how much is changing because from year to year it's not so major. But let's you know, look at the 10 year perspective. So if somebody had st stood here like uh, 10 years ago and, and uh, stayed at that knowledge when the iPhone came and then the iPad, um, that would be uh, somebody who had not followed developments would be fairly outside a lot of the skills that are needed in the modern labor market. Yeah, so I think we should be worried and, and those that uh, fall behind uh, I don't think necessarily coming back to this early point that they're not necessarily going to be unemployed, but it's going to be harder to uh, enter the labor market and the wage developments will be uh, slower for those that don't get these skills. So I think we need to focus a lot more on uh, uh, lifelong learning. This is a very popular topic, lifelong learning, uh, but uh, I, I think we really need to put emphasis on learning throughout life. So going back to education throughout our lives, perhaps to change career, uh, to encourage that. Uh, because it's not only the technology, it's also that we're living longer. Demography is having big impact. So uh, we need to be able to uh, you know, work longer and perhaps update the skills more frequently than we've had in the past. And what should governments, businesses and individuals do to adjust to the new ecosystem created by ICT? Well, uh, uh, I, I think they should start by removing some of the obstacles that we are having for, for, for work in the, in the new economy. Uh, the this b digital super firms, you know, the, the big ones like Google and Facebook, they're already established. Uh, but many of these don't provide a huge number of jobs. Uh, and uh, so the challenge is that we need more small firms with small ideas to enter the labor market and create a dynamic labor market. Uh, and some of the regulation that's now in place is difficult for, for small businesses. Uh, there's a lot of regulation on data. Uh, the big firms, they have lots of lawyers, they can handle this complexity uh, and the new regulation that's coming. But the new firms, they are going to be apprehensive about starting uh, new businesses when they are very liable for things that go wrong. So I, I think that the regulators have a, a, there's an urgent task in th rethinking about you know, what, how are we going to make it easier to have new work in, in, this, in, the, in the new economy. And what's the environment like in Sweden in particular to this? So we have uh, very strong protection for uh, personal data re regarding health, uh, but similar to many other countries, there's not much protection for uh, buying things when we use search engines uh, and the data we give away f f uh, f to get free services a lot of the time, right? Uh, and the regulator needs to 
think about what is the balance of all of these different environments. Uh, thinking about health in particular, there's a lot of tools coming out that allows us to measure how well we are living uh, to our pulse and uh, to, to measure our bodies in, in, in ways and can give us warnings, maybe if we are not feeling well or if there's a heart attack in, in, uh, and such. So uh, how, is, how is the regulation going to make it possible to have this kind of data and to use it for consumer and health benefits. I don't think we're asking this question, but I think we are, we are not yet beginning to, to, to get in the, in the right direction on, on en enabling this. And finally, how can data and statistics help to understand and address the changes brought about by ICTs? There's a big shift uh, in the whole economy going from production of goods to production of services. So the service economy is becoming more and more important. It's a trend for a long time. And now digitalization makes it even tougher because uh, a lot of goods, are, a lot of services are free or they are paid in different ways. And unless we can find better ways to measure the service economy and digital services, the policy makers are not going to be able to uh, get a good grip on what is the level of economic activity, uh, what's the capacity utilization, uh, monetary policy and lots of fiscal policy is geared towards knowing what is the state of the economy and it's becoming diff more difficult to, to, to measure that. So they need to get grips on, on how to measure the new service activities and uh, digital activities. Martin Dix, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And please tune in to the ITU YouTube channel for more insightful and informative videos. Thank you.